Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Cool. Um, nice to meet you all people, lovely people, Android developers and others. Um, <laughs> so, um, so essentially, my name is Quinley. I'm, I'm an Android developer. I've been doing um, software development for four years, Android on and off for four years, but professionally, the last two years, I've been mainly focused on Android. And funny enough, I was actually, yesterday was my last day at the Telegraph, so, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Awkward, but um, uh, yeah, so I guess it's a job interview, I guess. But um, essentially, my experience here at Telegraph um, allowed me to explore one of the, one of the areas that, that really caught my attention in the last couple of months, uh, and it's uh, augmented reality. So um, it was a case where, I think some of you might have the Telegraph app, and there was a, we were planning on doing an article which was about space, and we want it to be in a sense where people can click on an image and they can see um, a virtual reality of the solar system. So, and that way they can interact. So that would be another way for our users to engage with our content, essentially. So we were tasked to do um, a little mini side project from about the improvement reality. And I've never done this before at that time. And by no means, I'm no expert now. I've still got a way to learn. But it was really interesting. I delved into it, so I decided to make my talk today about it. Um, so cheap promotion there. That's my Twitter. You can follow me. I'm very sociable <coughs> and I'll interact with you. If you need any um, not help or anything like that, or anything like that, any, any information or something based on this um, presentation, just let me know. I'll be happy to send you links and I can share my GitHub project with you. <coughs> so let's get started. So. What is augmented reality? Augmented reality is another form of virtual reality where you're not fully immersed in the content in the reality itself. We're still, we're, we're still placing the user in the real world with computer-generated um, objects that the user can either interact with or just understand what's going on with that. And it's a case where, um, again, like I was saying back to the article, where we wanted the user to be able to see our content in another way rather than seeing it through your the usual way of images and um, photos. You can, that way you can get the user in and they can see generated objects of what's going on. And yeah, augmented reality has been around since the late 80s or early 90s. It's, um, it's definitely older than me. But um, it's, a, it's a concept where it's not really progressive as it should have. Which it's got so much um, opportunities to progress, so much potential, but it's not really, had, it has not really evolved in that. And my talk is to try and sort of spark a conversation with our, within our developers community to try and push it. I really believe us mobile developers, web developers, we can actually take augmented reality to another level. And yeah. Um, so yeah, so any, any questions just about that? Or you're good? You can follow me? Yeah, okay, cool. So in the last couple of years, we've seen augmented reality go forward in the, essentially in the, it has huge success in the mobile industry. We've seen, obviously, you've seen Pokemon Go. Uh, I love Pokemon Go. I'm a huge Pokemon fan. Um, so I was kind of happy when this game originally came out. And um, it was a, another way of like, wow, this is something different. <coughs> You're interacting with the world and the Pokemon. It was, um, it was another way that showed that the, the potential augmented reality has in, in mobile games. Another game is, um, I don't know if anyone's played this, but uh, My Time I Got You Forever. I'm actually addicted to this game. This game is really, really cool. So uh, it's another way for like, I know most of you, I hope some of you have played Time of so you both have answered me. This have a virtual pet. So this one is, again, you're still having a virtual pet, but again, you can take pictures of your virtual pet and you're not to reality for a way. So it's another way to engage with users rather than the traditional way of playing the Time of <coughs> game. And both games have had huge success. And again, it taps into another area that us mobile developers can look into. Then other games um, I've played that's, that's augmented reality on mobile is Nightfall AR and Jurassic World Alive. Nightfall AR, um, it's a good game, but it's really heavy. It's like 300 megabytes. So yeah, that can take a lot on your phone. But again, it's another way of um, showing these um, worlds, game worlds, in another form of, um, another form of way to present the user with information. Jurassic World Alive is very similar to Pokemon Go in terms of you're walking around, you're looking for dinosaurs, etc. And yeah, so I think that's a 
try that kind of sauce. I can't remember what it was. <laughs> but that's it on my, just about to eat my magic mouse. But um, it was cool. And that way you can, and that is another way of engaging with the users. They can not just play, but they can also learn through augmented reality, which is another good experience. It doesn't have to stick with um, games as well. You can go through other apps. Um, I've, I was, I was recently playing around with uh, AR stickers in my living room, well, not living room, but my way to my living room, and I just put the Star Trooper there, and it was just, it was already, it was AR stickers, it was immersed, it was, a, it was a content using the camera app, which again, we, we can use that in our app, we can make a way to engage with our users, another way through AR stickers, like example, the way AR stickers did it, and again, it's very interactive, it's fun, it's a new way of engaging with our users. And then there's the other app, IKEA Place, which is very useful because someone is moving around. You get to show, let's say, a furniture, here we have a drawer, or floor, floor, and you can see how it looks in your living room or in your bedroom. Get a rough idea of how it looks. And it's another way of where we can use AR to help benefit us. It's a really cool way. I, kinda, I, I think that's a really cool idea. Before you go buy some of that and be like, oh, no, it doesn't fit in my living room anymore, etc. So that's another creative way. Again, you can use it through educational purposes as well, which I feel like it can be used. I was talking earlier, I want to show the space, space um, the planets in our Telegraph app, where the user can um, learn a different way, through, learn visually. And um, I found these two really cool apps, BBC Civilization app, where it's sort of like you're, you're like in the natural, you know, the British Museum, and it has all these sort of crazy um, uh, 3D objects that you can interact with and learn. So here we have, uh, I think it was um, 500 BC. So just learn about that. It has a, it has like a 3D object of um, King um, Tutankhamun's um, tomb. So you can again learn through that, which is really cool. And, and this is another opportunity for us to to give away content, not give away, but give content out there for users to interact with in another way. Then obviously you've got a solar system map, which is really cool. This one I say is more VR than AR, but it was a case where your phone, you're using your phone, and it basically predicts the whole room that you're in, in space, with the sun and the rest of the planets. And you can click on each of the planets and it'll give you useful information in terms of the gravity, in terms of um, its rotational speed, useful information. So it's another way where I feel AR can be used by us in the form of educating us, showing us new ways to view content and learn, con learn from our content. And you don't have to use AR as a side way within your app or make a game for AR. You can find ways to integrate it. You can use it through ads like Snapchat. They have, um, they still have an AR module where you take a picture and have that like, little sort of crazy filter and a um, little cartoon jumping around, which is really cool. Here we have um, L'Oreal using um, Facebook, obviously we all know Facebook is, but they're using their camera to allow uh, the user to show different um, virtual shades of their makeup. This again within the Facebook app, so it's a way that we can also interact within our app for or any other app, what you would like to do with AR. There's all sorts of stuff you can implement. It doesn't have to be a, a whole Pokemon Go, or it doesn't have to be a whole education Thing. You can sort of have like an ads where you can implement AR and that way you give the user engaged with the ads also within the app so everyone sort of wins. So, how can us developers get involved? <coughs> well, there's like so many platform libraries and frameworks out there for us not to play with. So you don't necessarily have to play with AR4. You can, there's AR kit, which is for what I've heard from the the dark side, that's a really good library to use <laughs> and like it, it allows them not to learn about um, OpenGL and all that stuff. It's really high level and it's really easy for them to get started with AR, AR kit. Um, and some of the principles Google have sort of taken from Apple. Shock. But um, they did a bit better for AR core. <laughs> <laughs> also, um, yeah, before, yeah, which is another um, SDK where you can build uh, cross-platform AR experiences. You have AR JS for um, web developers. You, you want to use JavaScript to create an um, augmented reality experience for the users. 
We have Unity, and um, Unity is really cool if you want to get quickly started up with AR and make it cross platform. The, the downside with Unity is that it does add a lot of, um, it does increase your APK size to roughly 20 megs, which if you're trying to implement an AR experience, I wouldn't suggest using Unity because it's going to add 20 megabytes for no reason. But if you're doing a full AR app then, and you want to get started straight away, then Unity is a good, good place to go. Um, Viral Pool, I have used, and it's a really cool because when I started getting to AR Pool, it was a bit tricky. It was like a lot to learn. And, you know, so I just wanted something to get up and running. Viral Pool was a really good, really good um, platform to use to work with Androids in Java and can create your augmented reality experience really quickly. So there's there's and there's tons of others out there that you can like that you'd like to get into using AR. <coughs> so obviously it's an Android as a launch rate of an Android developer, so I'm going to talk about um, AR Core. So AR Core is essentially is involved with the Tango project that Google had which was trying to, again, trying to create an augmented reality experience for um, developers that they can use. They, it, was a, it was trying to create augmented SDK, a reality SDK for developers to use to push augmented reality out there. But it was, it ran into a few issues. It wasn't really picked up and kicked off, but um, AR, AR Core evolved from that. And yeah, so like I said, it's a, it's a platform for building augmented reality experience for which developers can use. Um, it has um, three key capabilities that um, you should try and understand with AR Core. The first one is motion tracking. So AR Core uses um, uses uh, a process called COM, which is concurrent photometer measuring, and essentially it uses that to understand the world, the, the user's world around them, and in a way that they can, we can that AR Core can position you get some points and then we can place our 3D object 3D object. So it uses a com which gets the camera visualization. So the user info along with the device IMU which is the inertia measuring unit is to understand the the, the, the the phone's position in the world and that way it's able to build its AR core experience. Second is environmental understanding. Why AR core is using um, visual points to understand the, um, the world is also using planes again to help understand the world. So that way, it's using a cluster of feature points that are common in flat flat surfaces like the floor, table, etc. to help place your AR, your three D object there, horizontally or vertically, in the to that. The one downside I did find about it was if it's like a, a white wall or a white floor, it finds it really hard to draw a plane on it. So it's still getting there. And the third, but not the least, but it's, it's light estimation. So that way you can create another sense of realism for the user to when the user is in a dimly lit room or brightly lit room. So that way the user can get a sense of realism that this is an AR core experience. So here we've got our two lovely kitties, one's in a light room, one's in a sort of dark room. And you can see that how AR core works in the sense of the shadow effect. And um, the also your object is being uh, measured so that way the AR core can an intensive coloring, the intensity of it, and that way you can you create a sense of realism for the user to understand in the dark and light room. So, my, through my research and all of that um, stuff, getting started with AR Core, you do have to understand um, what mental reality is, understand what it is, understand how it can be used for, understand the potential of it, and understand a good foundation of how stuff works. You have to understand the basic concept of six degrees of freedom, which I'm going to try and see if I can remember. So it's left, right, forward, back, pitch, roll. Yes. And I remember that. <laughs> um, <laughs> so, and also you've got to understand 3D art, how 3D art works. Um, I don't really understand how 3D art works. I just go on Google and understand the basis of it. If that's enough for me to get started, but if you're going to do this for a production app, you're going to have to understand how you can manipulate these objects. And has anyone used Blender before? It makes you appreciate Blender time with Agile Studio, doesn't it? It's really like slow, and yeah. Um, yeah, so 
Um, I, I was using Blender to help manipulate my 3D objects that I've got from the funny site of Google. Um, for this actually, for this tutorial, for this tutorial I'll show. And you've got to understand OpenGL, which is like a crazy subject in itself. And that's what made me starting off with AR Core a bit off putting because OpenGL is a big thing. A lot of game developers and um, graphic design, graphic developers will know much about OpenGL, and it's, it's, it's a very big um, subject and topic to understand. But it's something that you would need to try and understand with AR Core when you're trying to build them. Augmented reality experience for users. Another thing you've got to understand is um, anchors and trackables, which is more. I don't, I'm not sure if it's, if it's specific to augmented reality, but I know it's for AR core. And so you're using essentially anchors to place where you are in a position. So when you place an object on that anchor, when you move your camera, the object remains in that place. And you've got your trackable, which is tracking where that anchor is sitting. So, in order of doing that, the um, Google, which, which, which I think it's there, they found out this is a problem for AR Core in terms of you needed a good knowledge of um, OpenGL and a lot of these um, complicated stuff. And Google was able to speak the same form with Google IO 18 and it was really cool. And it, it really helps developers, well, and the developers, to get into augmented reality at a high level. You don't really have to understand, uh, don't have to really understand. Um, you don't have to really understand the, the environment too well. It, it just gives you a high level where you can get started. It draws the trackable and the anchors for you, so you don't have to do any crazy calculation to work out the world around you. And again, seeing thing also helps cover up um, the open. Um, in augmented reality, with knowing the basic open geo, you can't know the whole full thing. Again, it includes a physical based renderer and it's a plugin on Android Studio that you can use to import your 3D renderables. Okay, so that's essentially your 3D model, which are meshes, materials, textures, etc. So it's very easy. You can, once you get the plugin on Android Studio, it will just track it in into your, you can put this into your root, um, the Gradle, then you're pretty much set to go. Then on your app, um, Gradle, just add the scene form library and the UX form from a library in the Google scene form plugin. Then you're ready to go. Very straightforward. So I've got some code here. I don't know if I want you to see that. So I've got this awesome class, this Avengers in our class, I just, I don't know, uh, ran out of games, I'm just to put it that. And it does, um, it just for the ease of this um, talk, I just did everything essentially in this class, so it's lack of words class, I just like to call it Zeus instead. So this is where everything happens here. So when you get started with AR form, with scene form, so you essentially get your Essentially, you set up a fragment here, and you add and you tag the name with and your core C form UX AR fragment. That allows you to it, that essentially converts that fragment into an AR fragment which you can then use to fill in our AR view. So, get your AR fragment, attach it to your um, your fragment ID in the in the XML file, and from there you're pretty much ready to go. And in using that, it does all the heavy lifting for you in terms of finding the placement of the world, understanding the um, anchors and trackables, and you're ready to go. Essentially, you just use the scene form to import your um, 3D object, and there you can drop it into your AR view. So I have a couple of useful, because I wanted to be a case where I took a lot of inspiration from the code lab as well to help me understand how scene form works. Then I just essentially use that to, to, show, um, to present to you guys. So essentially, we have the AR set on the update listener again, which is just not for the updates around the world. And then I'm going to use that information to help understand how I can build the world. Also, I have this little kind of trackable class where essentially it's just a drawable, it just helps map the center of the screen. And then 
And if, if the AR core is if AR core views able to track, the sector quality can be able to store it next to it. Yeah, so we have our update, which is again just using just using a tracking update tracking method, which is the which allows which we'll get from the AR dragon itself to understand what is going on. Is it being able to track the um, the world around it in case of an or like in a dark room or anything, or in a case where it just can't pick up anything? I need something to help me understand how I can position my three D objects in the world. And it uses this update hit list, which is essentially grabs anywhere that the user is hitting with that AR core, AR core um, view, and that way I can place my my 3D object in there. And again, this is where it gets the track of what's going to understand where I am in the world, and I want to put my um, object there. So I've got my initialized gallery, which, just for the sake of this, I'm just going to essentially put a, you see that? I'm going to put an image here. I'm going to use a picture of that image. My AR view, my AR view model appears. This is essentially what that initial gallery does. I just have to put credit there because I don't, in case this guy is here and he trying to see me, so <laughs> just throw it out there. <laughs> so yeah, um, they just pulled the um, rendable builder. It's really straightforward. All this is on the scene form SDK. They just say, okay, time for me to add to the object to the scene, which I'm using using the renderable and the anchor to place my object in my view. Now, the easier form, uh, um, to just, you go to your OBJ file. I've got loads, but I'll just play them out here. But if you go to your OBJ file, and also you've got to keep your OBJ files in the sample data because obviously it doesn't get included into the, into the APK. It's actually the, um, it's actually the SB, a, SFB file that will be included in and that will be your 3D object. So essentially what you do, you click, right click it, after you install the scene form plugin, right click, go to, no I don't have the plugin installed because it's an old computer. But um, it will appear here, import from scene form, you click on it, I can show you what it is actually. Uh, So this is just allowing you to have to install the plugin. Then essentially, me, I was, uh, what I was saying is I would click, right click to import scene, import using scene form. Then this, then this little widget will appear, the scene form asset, and it will generate all this for you. So that way you don't have to wor worry about any of the past stuff. So as long as your OBJ file and your, MT, your MTL, your material file, MTL, is in the sample data, and just point to this using this. The C4 will generate the, um, the file, the SFB file for you, which is ready to use in your AR view, which is pretty cool. Then it has a little widget. Once you've done that, it'll, it'll use the, if the SFB will be read on Android Studio like this. So you've got the little, the JSON file, which will contain the information that you need, and then your model will appear here. So it's just, again, it's really straightforward to get, with, get into. Then in doing so, After doing that, I was able to add my model into my simple world. Um, this was like, I only took this yesterday, so you can see my productivity was really low yesterday. <laughs> so, so, yes, yeah, so I click on, I start my Avengers ad, um, activity. As you can see, it's finding the track of all the anchors, and from there, it's too fast, from there, I can click there. Click on the image, then my 3D object appears in the AR world. So I'm just looking, I'm just to show you how it, how it works. That's to reduce the, using Blend, that's to reduce a lot of the um, quality of the um, OBJ file because it was just too big. The, the design of it did it, did it in such a way where it was a big file and it was just going to be crazy size for me to import into the APK. So I just, yeah, just show how pretty sick it is and how get started with scene form to start doing our AR core. Cool. So, 
the challenges that we face, not just with AR core, but with uh, augmented reality, um, not all mobile devices out there, because uh, they need to be running Android 7 and above for the, for the phone to actually allow them, and there's still a limited number of those devices running 7 that can actually run AR core or augmented reality experience. Though there's a workaround we can do with Unity and um, um, ARJS as well, so that can help you out. Again, it's, like I said, it is a steep learning curve for developers, and to the sense where, yeah, again, this was, if you don't want to use C4, you want to create your own way. If you're like a AAA developer, you can create their own game engine and do it. But um, again, for just an average developer that just wants to get started with AR4, it is a steep learning curve. And not every app has a use case for AR4, just, just for AR itself. So again, it's not, you need to understand what is you trying to engage your user to do in their augmented reality experience, what you want from them to gain from it, and if it's actually useful or beneficial to that. And yeah, debugging an AR core can be a problem. If you've done it, especially if you've written, um, the, if you've written the engine in open, <coughs> with OpenGL, it can be a problem. It can be, it'd be hard to debug if you don't understand if it's the equation that I've written or the algorithm that I've written is wrong. So it, it, can, it can be a headache for I think it's working over to your technique in But um, again, Unity, um, again, you can use Unity to get started, but again, you're adding 20 megabytes. So you need to understand is this really what you want for your app? Also, yeah, just see useful information. Um, if you, oops, I don't know if you really remember this, but if you need, it, you can either follow me on Twitter and I'll be able to give you these links to understand. But if you want to get running up and running with, um, AR for these are really useful um, um, links to people to go. To use my sample project here, just to get a rough understanding of what I did, there is quite a link in that project as well, so you just go through and understand what's going on. And of course, you can use the C you can go through the scene for SDK and the example <coughs> and the code lab as well, and that will get up and running really quickly. And I really like you going to this next reality news. You get so much useful information and inspiration about what's going on in augmented reality and Virtually, which is really cool. So, yeah, that's me. <laughs> um, questions. Any questions? Oh, yeah, uh, what are the public things for like, at least one thing you have to uh, use to something like open GL? One thing that I found that was really difficult is when you start when you want to, when you want to render up complicated um, OBJ files or OBJ objects, um, it becomes very difficult. And if you want to do animation as well, it gets really tricky because it, uh, from what I've seen from the SDK, it doesn't really show you how to handle animation. But um, the very cool library that I was using, that helps in, with um, um, handling animation and complex OBJ files. What was, what was difficult about the OBJ files? It was difficult because you need like a couple of systems to go through each animation, right? You or you try and move around the object you're trying to do. Oh, just, to you on. just to show it to you, you know what I'm saying? Uh, yeah. That guy with the glasses had a question. <laughs> I think it can take, especially with us mobile developers, as, like I was saying before, not just for games, but it can be used for education purposes, for if you're in medical school, again, it gives you that visual improvisation of understanding what's going on. Um, again, for teaching kids maths, for teaching kids science, for teaching any, any of us, it's another form of visual content that we can use, and, and I think with us developers, we need to use that. Any other questions? No? Thank you. Telegraph engineer, we're gonna have to do it again. <laughs> <laughs> Steve Hilton. Yeah. 
Thank you. 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 Thank you.